Do you hear Wonderful. It? Loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Happy to have you okay. both here today. I would like to thank you both yeah. for uh, deciding to join today's programming for the Hippy Dippy Championship. Whoever wins today will be the Hippy Dippy Championship. That award, of course, comes with a over $300 uh, professional belt. Uh, that we have designed personally for the person to be awarded, as well as many guaranteed future appearances on the hip programming and uh, championship defenses. I would like to thank you both for coming together today. I would like you both to introduce yourselves quickly. Uh, Destiny, would you like to introduce yourself? I am Destiny, the reigning Hippy Dippy Belt champion. I slaughtered my last opponent with alacrity so hard that I believe that they and their crew left crying. And I'm here to do the same once more to defend the belt against these horrible tanky scourge while defending my boys, the Democratic Party in the United States of America. That's what I'm here to do today. Okay. And now we're going to throw it over to Infrared. Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Haas from Infrared. I am here. I don't know what a hippy dippy is. I don't know what a belt is. I don't know anything about that. I am here to prove Marxism, Leninism, and the age of multipolarity in the post-COVID world. I am here to debunk the lies about the so-called uh, democratic party. There's nothing democratic about it. I'm here to uh, debunk the idea that the establishment is the only bet and the only choice we have. I'm here to defend the idea of a big tent third party. And let me tell you something. I don't intend on losing. Happy to have you both here. And I would like to thank the production staff for the amazing Titan Trons and Billy the Fridge, the internet legend, for the amazing intros for both of them. Now, uh, I am going to state the rules quickly. So, uh, you will both have a short intro period where you can give your basic thoughts on the topic and an outro period, which will be uninterrupted. Then, you'll have an open period where you two can go back and forth. I will not be giving my opinions in this debate. If I speak up, I am only moderating, and that is the only time when you're going to really need to quiet down. Now, the purpose of this, of course, is for you two to debate the topic, should uh, Americans vote for the Democratic Party? Uh, and uh, if there's any more questions about rules or regulations, the only last thing I could say is that afterwards, of course, a three-judge panel will decide who gets the championship belt mailed to them after this debate. So, is everybody ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Wonderful. So, since infrared is the challenger for the belt, I will give him a uh, first word on should people vote for the Democratic Party. All right. So to begin, hold on. Wait, someone's at the door. You need to say? Okay. Destiny. Wait, it's, I can't mess with it's my games. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? We're going great. Hello. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing great. What's the question? Should people vote for Democrats? Definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, if that's the intro, Destiny, now you can start. With oh, that was the intro? I'll do my intro. I'll do my intro. We should not vote for Democrats because at the end of the day, Democrats are uh, only another arm of the uh, corporate oligarchy. They are further, they're furthering the imperialist wars. They are crippling more Americans into we debt. Can't hear anything you're saying. Your mic is like really like fucking up. Is it too loud? Yeah, it's like the gain is like immense. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. The Democratic Party is uh, furthering the crippling of the American public. They're further indebting them. They're driving them into more, driving us into more imperialist wars. They are. Uh, Causing us to not have health care, not have free public tuition. Uh, they're preventing all of the basic necessities we need to have uh, to have a prosperous society. Yet they are all running under the guise of supporting these things. And they're, you know, sheepdogging more people into the Democratic Party in an effort to uh, co-opt the movement. And at the end of the day, they only further isolate people from actually achieving any of these goals. So, uh, you know. I think uh, if you look at the actual policies that have been failed to have been passed but have been supported by different candidates, you can see that you know they've lied time and time again about the things that they say they support. Um, and even then, you know some of the things that they do say they support from the get-go, such as wars with Taiwan or wars with China over Taiwan, 
We're supporting public options that will only further decimate the healthcare industry, the healthcare plan in this country to guarantee universal healthcare to all people. Uh, it's only going to hurt more Americans, and uh, that, that's what they do. Okay. Destiny, your intro statement? Voting for third parties is a waste of time. None of them have a shot at making it anywhere. The only thing that's good for third parties is getting Twitter clout or having fun debates, I guess, on Twitch or uh, YouTube. If you truly want to support things like a more robust economy that supports workers at the bottom, uh, health care that works for everybody and not just people that can afford the best private insurance, um, relatively less hawkish foreign policy, uh, people that support things around medical science, so for instance stuff related to vaccines or the coronavirus, if you want to support people's right to vote, if you want to support the ability for unions to exist, and if you want to support a party that believes in climate change, I think that it's probably more important to support the Democratic Party than to throw away your vote on some Mimi third party that doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of holding any effective office. I think that if third parties really wanted to build real power in this country, they would spend more time actually winning local elections to build real support for their movement instead of just doing this like Hail Mary for the presidency every year where they can raise some money, have absolutely no effective change, and then write a bunch of books later on about the failures of their parties and all the excuses they make for it. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're here to talk about today, I guess. Okay, it is now open dialogue. You two are free to go back and forth. You may begin. So I think destiny begins from the presupposition that, well, the Democrats are the only ones who support this, this, and that, and that no one else actually has a chance. I'm curious to know why destiny thinks he knows a third party is actually not possible. Given the history of the United States, the Republicans and Democrats haven't always existed. And there's actually a precedent in um, monumental historical shifts, political shifts within the United States. Yeah, yeah, and uh, historical shifts within the United States. Third parties and alternative parties to the status quo do happen in the history of the United States. Um, shifts in the uh, even the political alignment of parties happen in these kinds of, um, you know, decisive historical moments. And I think you would really have to be a complete, you know, either a liar or someone who's burying their head under the sand to deny the fact that right now in, the, in this country, we are facing a decisive historical transformation, a political realignment, and um, one such moment that precisely makes an alternative third party uh, possible. Now, you can you know deny and dismiss that all you want, but to go out of your way to say that a third party actually isn't possible and that the only choice we have is between the Republicans and the Democrats, I think that's an unfounded uh, assumption. So typically, if political parties are going to build their power, it's not going to be a Hail Mary uh, winning of the presidential election. Um, and then all of a sudden, this third political party is more popular. If there was a third party that was legitimately gaining steam, then, I mean, maybe there might be talk of supporting them in the future. But I was here when people thought libertarians could win against Obama, when people supported Ron Paul, uh, you know, back with Bush and the Green Party, people were talking. Uh, there was Ross Perot. I mean, against Trump, you've seen like third party, the uh, liberty, Gary Johnson, like there, there have been all these third party candidates that have kind of sprung up and they can get like what, like one percent of the vote or two percent of the vote. But like ultimately, they're ineffective. Um, you can see the writing on the wall. You're never going to have like a, a mysterious, like explosive. Oh, my God, out of nowhere, this third party candidate wins. I think that if third parties want to build real power, they should probably focus doing it on the city or at least state level before they just try to make these big runs for the presidency when most people in the United States consider those third parties to be a joke. Okay, well, there's two things, actually. Um, the first argument I'd like to point out is that, historically speaking, the emergence of the Republican Party was precise. you know, the Republican Party uh, didn't emerge uh, because, you know, they were slowly winning at the local level and then eventually... No, it created because there was a um, discernible um, political distinction and difference that was within the prevailing party. And it was precisely, you know, by winning the, the presidency that the Republican Party was boosted into um, relevance and significance historically. So historically speaking, that's just not true. Third parties or whatever you want to call them, alternative parties, have won historically... Um, on the basis of these kinds of so-called Hail, Hail Marys. But even if we discount that fact, I personally don't think people should necessarily rely on a so-called Hail, uh, Hail Mary. I think that a party does require work at local levels. It does require dedication and energy and building foundations and infrastructure. And it requires the maturity to be able to have a big tent third party. This is the most important part that's going to be able to overcome, you know, the kind of petty political sectarianism that you see so common among the left and just be able to focus on getting this third party to win. But on the other hand, if the question is about, and we're addressing this to the audience, 
should you vote Democrat? My view is a decisive no. And the reason why um, is because you should be focusing your effort on building a third party. And even if that means taking your energy and attention away from these, you know, um, congressional and uh, presidential elections, you know, if, if a third party is going to start winning locally, that also implies a broader information and propaganda war that allows you to draw a line of distinction. You can't, on the one hand, campaign at a local level and say, oh, let's vote for this third party. But on the other hand, shill for the Democrats when it comes to the national level in terms of propaganda and optics. So just to be able to distinguish yourself enough sufficiently, even if you're just going to focus on local levels, you do have to make a stance when it comes to these very broad, unifying political um, moments where, you know, American politics is really defined at the level of the presidential elections whether we want to whether we like that or not just at the level of optics information and propaganda so if you're going to distinguish yourself as a third party you cannot say oh let's vote for biden or oh let's you know um swallow our pride and vote for the democrats you have to take a stance even just as a matter of optics in those such moments so to whomever it, it may concern Right. And I don't think this is going to be like the majority of the American people right now. But those who are interested in politics, young people who do want to see changes in this country, you should focus. And this is for true for influencers such as yourself who go on stream and claim that, you know, you're interested in uh, seeing all these changes happen in this country. It doesn't matter where you fall on the political spectrum. It doesn't matter what your specific ideology is or what your sp specific views are. You should be getting on board with a big tent focusing on trying to build a big tent a third party and i find it especially ironic that destiny says it's not possible when if streamers like him influencers like him got the ball ro rolling um him vouch hassan and all these streamers i mean that would that enough would like blow out of the water all of the other precedent attempts within the past you know few decades to build third parties you already have the media infrastructure to build a political alternative in this country like the you are yourself a form of alternative media destiny whether you like it or not you're not a form of mainstream media so it's i just find it so okay, ironic right. do i get a chance to respond to things or yeah go oh, ahead shit. well yeah Borgia. go ahead okay i'm trying to just talk over um so i, I mean like if we want to talk about like political parties from 200 years ago, we can. Um, I mean, if you've got a political party that's ready to absolutely collapse in the United States that doesn't enjoy like a massive amount of popularity, which the Democratic and the Republican Party do, um, I mean, we can do that. But I mean, it took the Whig Party collapsing, right, in like the fucking 1800s in order for the Republican Party to like grow from the ashes okay. of that. Um, to try to say that like the situation is the same today, I know that a lot of people talk like, oh my God, like the, the parties are collapsing. They're not. They both enjoy like a pretty tremendous amount of support right now. I just don't see either of them collapsing right now. Now, maybe that'll change in a few years. Maybe the party of Trump, you know, maybe we'll come out and support Trump as a third party candidate. Who knows? I mean, that's anything is possible, I guess it could be. Um, the progressive or left-wing movement in the Democratic Party definitely isn't healthy or large enough to support somebody. But maybe in the Republican Party, maybe we'll see somebody uh, grow out as a result of that. But again, like these political realignments happened like over 150 years ago, right? The Democratic and Republican Party are like 200 years old. I think that any time you're trying to say, this is possible, and you have to reach back like two is, is a millennia 100 years two, like 200 years to try to point to where this has happened before i think your argument is already starting off on an incredibly rocky foot um it, you know like politics change the the power of the federal government changes the way that we consume media changes the way that these parties exist oh two centuries um the way that these parties exist ha has changed like um just so much that i'm not willing to go back 200 years ago and say well it worked then so it should work now uh, in terms of like if you vote on third party does that mean that um like you should vote third party even if that means losing elections in the meantime i don't i don't like that idea because i think that is a very privileged position to have there are a lot of people that are hurting right now in the united states that probably don't want to gamble the next 5 10 20 30 years of their life on whatever gambit you have for your fantasy third party that's going to come up and rise up and destroy the united states uh, or, or not destroy the United States, but destroy the U.S. like political parties that exist right now. I think that's a pretty selfish thing to demand of people that are hurting right now and need help right now. 
So, um, and then also in terms of like, you can't vote third party locally and then presidentially vote different. You absolutely can do that. Local politics are an incredibly diverse landscape of different types of candidates that believe in all sorts of different things. There's even more variety among Republicans and Democrats at the local level, or you can support third parties. Um, and you might even have a better shot doing so. There are plenty of local scenes that support, for instance, open primaries where anybody can make it to like these top two or three positions. And then you have your um, citywide or your statewide vote. Like these things exist. There might even be more ripe areas where third party candidates can flourish because the amount of money that you need to raise is way less and campaigning on key issues to those geographic areas is more successful than trying to make this huge run at, a, at the uh, presidential scene um, and then even the idea that like you can't vote differently one way and then vote another way for president doesn't make sense because we saw like on down ballot tickets that there were for instance a lot of republicans that would support trump but then wouldn't support down ballot republicans or there are a lot of um, democrats that would support biden but wouldn't support down ballot um Democratic, you know, senators or congressmen. So I think you absolutely can support third party candidates on local levels while also supporting, you know, a mainstream president or a, a mainstay, like one of the two political party presidents so that you can increase the the outcomes or whatever group of people you're advocating for on the presidential level. Um, for the final thing, the idea that like you can, you have to take some stance as a matter of optics. Once more, I think it's a privileged position to be able to wear a, a political flag uh, optically or rhetorically rather than out of necessity, like a lot of poor people are right now, for instance, that are helped by the child tax credit that exists under Biden that probably wouldn't have come under the Republicans, um, or you know, for diabetics that have health insurance that wouldn't have, but they do thanks to the ACA, um, or you know, for people who can feel a little bit more secure about their future because they were DACA recipients that aren't constantly being attacked by Trump anymore. These are people that don't have the luxury of wearing a political outfit as like a or optical device, but rather they rely on these political parties to secure a safe existence in the United States. Okay, so I discern five points, and uh, I'm just going to respond to each of them, and I'll count them off, the top, uh, off my hand, right? So the first one um, was about the, uh, unless you think the Democratic Party is today about to collapse, I'm actually curious as to your view on what a situation would look like, uh, uh, what would it look like for a party to collapse? Because the way I see it, um, f for example, we're looking at an infrastructure bill that's not embarrassingly can't even be passed, not because of the Republicans, but because of a faction of the Democrats, right? I mean, that's just one example, too. The political realignment is so profound today within the two constituent parties. I don't see how you could say, oh, yeah, the, the Democratic Party enjoys widespread popularity. Well, which Democratic Party? Because if you look at the factions within the Democratic Party, it is not a unified party. So I'm curious as to which party you're referring to, because unless you can prove that there's like a, you know, uh, like unifying support for the Democrats in general, like regardless of the differences within them, which is a completely base, like Kristen Cinema and Joe Manchin's base is not voting for the Democrats for the same reason that Democrats elsewhere are voting for the, you know, there are really specific class demographic differences and the reasons why people vote Democrat. So I'm curious, what would it look like for a party to uh, to collapse? The second thing you said was that there hasn't been a political realignment uh, like the one that happened in, around the Civil War in 200 years. Well, first of all, that's just not true, right? The Democrats and Republicans only share continuity with those parties historically in all but name today, right? We all know that. Um, the parties have fundamentally changed and... Um, if you look at the origins of the modern Democratic Party, it's actually really interesting. It was because of uh, initiatives like the Populist Party and the Farmers Alliance in the late 19th century and early 20th century that led to this kind of unity between, you know, the, the new, that led to the synthesis that is the New Deal Democrats, which eventually would be, um, you know, champion the causes of minorities and stuff. So there's you can actually locate two realignments within the 20th century the first one was the rise of the democrats as like the party of the new deal the second one was around the time of jfk and uh, beyond where the democrats increasingly coveted the votes of minorities and um demographics like that instead of the traditional working class white base the third thing you said and um if i've forgotten some of your points you're gonna have to correct me or point out like i didn't oh you didn't respond to this the third thing i think you mentioned was that oh well uh you have this dream about a third party but that's coming from a position of privilege because what about harm reduction and the thing i find so interesting about arguments about harm reduction is this um this pre this assumption about 
the scale of time. Now, if you're talking about voting individually um, for a for the Democrats in order to you know reduce, even if there's still going to be harm, it'll be that much different for that. It'll make a difference to real concrete individuals. Well, you're still speaking in terms of like an abstract scale of millions of people. So if you can speak in terms of millions of people at that scale of, of harm reduction or whatever, why can't you speak in terms of time? What if in the short term people may suffer more, but in the long term you're securing a better future? What if if you don't act now and fight for a third party alternative to the current establishment, future generations are going to be uh, more profoundly harmed? than the amount of people who are going to be harmed now. So I'm interested if you can address this issue of the scale of time. Uh, the fourth thing I think I heard you Wouldn't mention. I'm forced to go point by point so we could just have a I'll, I'll combine the last two. So you basically said you, you can still vote local and vote for Democrats at the national level. Well, that's true. Um, you know, you obviously can do that. And I'm not saying, oh, you're morally hypocritical or inconsistent for it. But I'm saying in terms of what would be necessary for building a third party. Um, yes, in terms of the sphere of the information war and optics, you can't be shilling for the Democrats at the national level and then voting for the uh, then, then saying, oh, let's vote for the third. You're just tell you're not you're telling people you're not willing to risk. Uh, enough for this party you basically don't believe in it you believe the current options are the only ones that really exist and you're saying oh that's privileged to focus on optics um that because you're you know you're, you're not focusing on poor people and doing charity well guess what those poor people you're talking about are the literally the people who don't fucking vote so why i don't know why you like if it's about them and you're using them as your excuse and them as your shield why don't they vote? They don't vote. Overwhelmingly, the people who don't vote are not privileged people. It's the privileged people in this country who go out and vote the most and, and spread the word that people should vote. Non-privileged people don't give a shit about politics. They don't believe in the system and the establishment. They think it's the two parties are the same thing. In fact, a third party would mo probably mobilize more currently politically apathetic voters than any other uh, political option uh, on the table so this is an absurd argument you're you're leveling oh it's privileged and then the idea that politics isn't about information and optics politics i'll just say this in this country politics is only information plus organization that's all it is there's there's nothing more to politics in this country but optics slash information and organization. It's not about charity. It's not about harm reduction. It's not about doing things now so less people suffer. Why don't you sign up personally, Destiny? You should sign up for a soup kitchen instead of sitting on your ass streaming if you're going to talk about, oh, what can I do individually to help the most people? Individually, you can. why don't you give your money to charity? Why don't you work for a soup kitchen? You know, if you want to go down that route and, and act like that's what politics is about, you know, it's uh, it's a complete absurdity. Okay, for going forward, we're going to go point by point. Fuck. We don't have like five or ten minute statements. Okay. Can, how, okay. I feel like if we do that, I feel like I've lost because now I can't respond to everything that was said, though. Okay. So we will have you give a three to three and a half minute statement. Then we're going point by point past that. I don't want to have just essays. Back well, but is that for Nahaz? Because wouldn't he wouldn't he get basically gish gallop then? He wouldn't be able to respond. Well. See, this is the, you got to draw the line somewhere, and that's what. Sure. Yeah, he spoke like five minutes first. Okay, so at the very least, I'll just I'll do my response on that. Okay. So, in terms of what would the situation look like for the parties to collapse, I don't know exactly what that would look like. Um, but I imagine it probably wouldn't look like a record number of votes for both presidential candidates in the history of the United States of America. Um, it would probably look for like it would look like less and less people voting, or maybe the rise of third parties in other areas, um, or I, I don't know, maybe like an inability to fundraise, or I mean, there are like signs or things where it's like may maybe some huge piece of legislation that caused a fracture from a party. Like some people could argue that January 6 was a collapse of the Republican Party because some people left the Republican Party after that. Probably not enough for it to happen, but I mean, there are signs that we could look for for a collapse, but whatever those signs are, we absolutely don't see them now. It's not YouTube people saying that like, oh my God, these parties suck, they're both the same. When we talk about how the infrastructure bill can't be passed because of Democrats, it's this is just like the dumbest thing that anybody could possibly ever say. We are split 50-50 right now. We are fighting for votes 49 and 50 on the Democratic side. We're not fighting for any of the 50 Republicans that are standing against this piece of legislation. It is not the Democrats that are preventing the bill from being passed. It is 50 Republicans plus one or two incredibly moderate or conservative Democrats.
Democrats that are in the way of this infrastructure bill being passed. To try to say that it's the same, to try to say that the Democrats are, are preventing it from being passed, just shows like an, a misunderstanding of how our legislative bodies work. Um, there's not a single Republican willing to come on board with this. Okay, well, then you need every single Democrat to come on board with it, which is really hard for what is arguably like the largest piece of legislation since the New Deal. It's a huge piece of legislation. Um, in terms of, again, the party is not a unified party. Can you provide or show like how there's like unifying support? I mean, there were huge turnouts for the presidential election, but in terms of like unifying support, I mean, like a Democrat in one area is not going to be the same as a Democrat in another area. A Republican in one area is not going to be the same as a Republican in another area. But if anything, this is an argument in favor of the um, of the ability for a two party system to work, even with dramatically different voters across the United States. You know, Democrats that support that support Manchin in West Virginia aren't going to be the same as the most left leaning Democrats that would support somebody like AOC or Democrats that exist in California. Um, and again, like your argument, you're, you're bringing up a lot of arguments that I think support my system, right? You're saying like the parties have fundamentally changed over time. Of course, the, the parties have a lot of tenacity, much like how Marx said that capitalism embeds itself into the government and also has abilities to perpetuate itself over long periods of time, preventing the rise of a socialist economy. Um, political parties also do as well. But this, this entrenchment of the political parties and their ability to kind of like morph and change and be a little bit flexible as people's opinions change, that's just arguments in favor of them continuing to stand the test of time as they've had both for like almost like over 150 years for both of them. Um, when we talk about like w engaging in harm reduction, um, engaging in harm reduction it, it is literally about choosing the lesser of multiple evils. It's it's not pontificating about an ideal third party nirvana that might exist 20 years from now that there's absolutely no roadmap for right now in any of the upcoming like federal level elections. Um, I, I don't know how anybody could say that that's uh, harm reduction. When we talk about like in the short term, you know, people might suffer, but in the long term, maybe we're securing a better future. That's just like, I don't know, in the long term, it could be a fascist dictatorship that rises up after a civil war. Yeah, I don't know if I would trust the Democrats or left-leaning people in this country to win a, a civil war against Republicans, no offense. Uh, so yeah, this idea that we need to throw away like our current electoral advantage in order to like do this huge gamut for this future that we have zero proof even exists, that we even think, we don't even know if there's that much support for these left-leaning parties in the United States. It seems like people like Bernie Sanders would prove that the support that they believe is there just isn't. Uh, when you say that you can't shill for Dems at a national level and then vote for a local third party, again, you absolutely can. Your local politics, your local political scene is going to be way different than your national level political scene. Um, I, I don't know where these statements are, are born out of other than just an, an, an unfamiliarity with uh, with local political scenes. Like you can have local political people that are Democrats or Republicans that are wildly different in terms of what they support uh, based on the national level. So you can totally support different candidates on a local level and different candidates at a, at a federal level. This is exactly why we talk about down ballot voting and why sometimes it's important and sometimes down ballot votes diverge from the from the top of the line vote, especially when it comes to presidential elections. Um, when you talk about poor people don't vote, that's true, but there's still a affected by policy. They're absolutely affected by policy. There's a lot of poor people that didn't vote for Biden that are still benefiting off the child tax credit or, or potentially anything that's coming from the inf infrastructure bill. Um, and then in terms of like, you know, it, it maybe a third party will galvanize these people and get out to vote. Third parties exist right now. Bernie Sanders tried this. Like, we're going to get all these people who traditionally don't vote to go out and vote. People say this all the time. We're going to get these people. We're going to mobilize. We're going to get these people to go out and vote. It never happens. If there is some third party that can magically mobilize or galvanize these third these non-voters into like new voters, that'd be great. It would be like a, a historic thing in order to do that. People have tried. People have failed. Um, and in terms of like, I, I don't think politics is about running soup kitchens either. If you want to talk about like personal charity or volunteer work, we can talk about that. But that's a fundamentally different question than whether or not we should support third parties. Okay, now from now on, it's going to be point by point. I just don't want five, five minute statements going back and forth. So that's how it's going to be going from this point on. Okay, uh, very quickly, I'll run down the list. So the reason there was incredible turnout in the recent election was not because anyone believes in the unity of the Democrats and the Republicans. It was a referendum on Trump. And that's all it was. Trump defined American politics at that point. People voted for Biden, not because they believed in a unifying Democratic consensus or they believe in a unified Democratic Party. But because it was a referendum on Trump, that's the only reason you're going to see um, such high turnout, because Trump has divided this country uh, down the middle. And that's the only thing that unites Democrats at this point is that they're against Trump. Um, well, why, not, if, why couldn't it be a referendum on Trump by going out to vote for a third party? What do you mean? We don't have there, a third party doesn't exist right now. There's no the infrastructure for one. No one's building one right now. That's, no one's yeah, people. Not enough argument. people are committing to the work of building a third party. You yourself, streamers and influencers who represent alternative media, you are not um, uh, giving them a chance. You're just shilling for the establishment while possessing the very media infrastructure to make a third party possible. So if you want to ask me why don't we have a third party right now, well, it's people like me and it's other people who are using their media platforms to try and work. 
for one and, and get something off the ground. And I just started recently. I don't know how my luck is going to fare, but you already have a really big, sizable platform and a, and a big audience. You could do wonders for a third party yourself, Destiny. I'm not saying a third. I don't support third parties, so that's why I don't. I use my. You okay? But okay. So hold on. When you say point by point, does you mean like I can't go down the list and address everything, or? Dylan, we're going point by point. We're going point by point. Yes. So you can like move from one point to the next point after you've addressed it. Yeah. I don't okay. understand how like we think that like the way that third parties are going to rise in the Americas off the backs of YouTubers and Twitch streamers. That seems like a pretty like. I don't. I, well, look, it. You can call it YouTubers or Twitch streamers, and I'll call it alternative media. And but YouTube sounds like a silly website, and it's a silly website on the internet with Minecraft or whatever PewDiePie. But the truth is that YouTube, and this is you can read the mainstream media because they themselves will confess this, has been an incredible platform for alternative media. Even alternative media, you probably aren't so vehemently opposed to like the young turks for example you were probably a young turks guy i mean your politics was probably defined entirely for many years as being a young turks democrat right and that's because Absolutely of alternative not, media but, okay um, um uh, people who call themselves the so-called progressive movement in the united states after the obama era its media was media like the young turks and democracy now and these kind of alternative media platforms that were largely on youtube so this idea that YouTube isn't a serious platform for alternative media, well, it's just that this alternative media has first emerged on YouTube. Will it always be on YouTube? Probably not. But you sure, know, like let's see, like who's who's been successful in like making real headway into actual politics from YouTube, right? Well, I'll give you a good I'll give you a good example. Um, the so-called Justice Democrats was an initiative yes. launched by the Young Turks and Kyle Kulinski. And I'm against AOC. I completely oppose AOC. Sure, but, but where did they where did they launch that initiative? They did it within they did it within the Democratic Party. Yeah, exactly. I know. And the reason for that, by the way, is because the Democratic Party already had the fundamental infrastructure, and uh -huh. the Democratic Party was a recognizable party with a base. But we've seen actually how this initiative has turned out, and we see that within the Democratic Party. Um, the Justice Democrats as an initiative failed entirely because we don't have our own independent uh, party with its own independent streams of revenue and its own independent um, structure that's not going to prevent progressives from being able to take take over the party. And very early on when AOC was elected, you know, they, the whole mainstream media and... Um, the party itself quickly, quickly did everything in its power to squash that in its cradle. And at this point, AOC has been completely co-opted as just another Democrat. So that's not really a good argument for why we shouldn't uh, be doing it for a third party. But regardless, serious... That's an amazing argument. So, I mean, like, the Justice Dems, like, were probably what I... From what I know of, is like the best initiative from an alternative media platform, um, the Young Turks and Kyle Kalinsky. The but it failed. Were able to do it, but they, they had to do it going. But the let's side reflect the on its Democratic. failure. Let's reflect on the reasons for its failure. Wait, 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 no, no, wait. You're saying failure, but I don't think it's a failure. They've got like four really strong members that are elected. AOC is arguably like the most popular politician. Okay, since politics States is right about now. making people's lives better, what has AOC done for the American people that makes it such a successful initiative? <clears throat> AOC doesn't have the ability to leverage much. So we, we have the... But, but hold on. AOC has been bad for the Democrats. A AOC has been so bad for the... this inability to... Hold, take hold on, hold on. ...in the United States because people like you seem to think that AOC needs to be able to solo change... No, no, I don't, but... But, 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 but at, at the very least, Democrats for example, she could make maybe a... Mar she can do like a little bit of help, but AOC has only done harm for the Democrats, actually. AOC um, has been an optics disaster for Democrats. Democrats and and a propaganda ammunition for the Republicans at this point. She, like her, even as a Democrat, you can't say AOC is an example of someone's success. It's not. A AOC has been a disaster for them. Like it, it, maybe Trump could have won in 2020 because of politicians like AOC were so divisive in this country. AOC was the face of like the the wing of the democrats that precisely has no chance whatsoever from uh, reaching out to trump's constituent base and uh, this tr these type of people that biden himself was trying to win over so no it's not a good example um aoc was i, I don't know I, like your your point is that like aoc hasn't like solely solo like drafted legislation no i'm not i i'm not asking her to solo draft legislation i'm asking her to initiate sure that we have destiny to finish this point quick 
just then yeah so like this idea that like she's a fil like people say this over and over and over again if you want we can i guess we can talk about like the structure of the u.s government but like i'm sorry but again this shows like the short-sightedness of people that have these huge legislative initiatives and can only get like one or two or three or four people into office like you have to build these caucuses this shit takes time this shit takes real work you guys want this fantasy world where out of nowhere you're gonna have like 200 people march into congress thinking that they're all gonna be these third-party people to spoke to one that's not how this works right now far left like lawmakers don't really have the leverage they need because right now you barely 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 have a legislative majority in the senate if that's the case you're always going to be appealing to people in the middle that can be lost next election season to the other side like aoc can make all the stinks she wants her seat's not being taken by a republican there's a reason why people like cinema or why people like mansion have the have the leverage in the poll that they do and it's because they're the ones that exist close to the center but if you had a margin no. of like 52 dems or 54 dems and you didn't have to worry as much about that center then people on the really far left could start making more power plays you know where aoc is like i'm not going to support this piece of legislation until this happens or this happens and it's like okay well you know we've got some wiggle room we got 53 52 democrats in here like maybe we can start to uh, uh make appeals to that side of the political aisle but okay it's yeah, yeah. Right okay, now. okay. so so th this rests hold on there's two things i want to say before you cut me off and i'm going to try to get it in quick the first one is i'm not saying aoc has to propose all this legislation all i'm saying is she has at least should kickstart some kind of change within the democratic party and she hasn't done anything like that, at least for the positive, as far as the ability for the Democrats to win over the people that are voting for Republicans currently now. The second thing is that you're basically implying, you basically make this uh, completely contradictory argument. On the one hand, you say, well, third parties are not possible because the current political reality is the only reality. On the one other hand, you say, oh, the reason why, and I wanted to actually get to this point, but uh, apparently we can't. Um, Kristen Cinema and uh, Joe Manchin have leverage is because there's not enough Democrats that have a majority over the Republicans. But that's implying that the reason for that isn't because of these objective political realities of populations in the United States who will never vote for the Democrats and will stick on the Republicans. It's this idea that the reason why it's such a slim majority right now is because there's not enough... Um, politically minded young people who are going out and, and voting for the democrats i completely reject that view i think the reason why uh, it's split down the middle is because this country is actually split down the middle and for you to say and i really want to address this point for you to say that the democrats it's not the democrats fault because they can't pass the infrastructure bill is the most stupid thing i've ever heard you the democrats are the ones it's a given republicans are going to oppose it the democrats have a majority now as a party they're supposed to act in a unified way if it's a unified party and yet it's because of a faction of the democrats that you're not getting this bill passed you can't blame the republicans because you already told people to vote for democrats as an alternative to the republicans so they voted democrat so much to the point that the democrats have a majority but now you're saying oh that's not enough the Democrats have to have an even more bigger majority. Well, how much wiggle room is there for Democrats to win when, you know, like, how much ability is there for Democrats to win over these Trump-supporting uh, Republicans to the point where, uh, you know, you can keep making these excuses? I don't buy it. I don't think it's going to happen. You're not going to win over these Trump people as a Democrat. And that seems self-evident and obvious to me. You're just going to, the country's divided down the middle. And I don't see how you've addressed that in any way, even. How have, how can you address the current political contradiction? I, I don't know what the contradiction is. So, like, you say, for instance, like, Democrats have a majority, but they're supposed to act in a unified way. But then it sounded like earlier you were saying that, like, the Democrat Party isn't unified. It's got a ton of different... That's why! That was my point. Democrat it's not unified. Wait, so, yeah, but so this is the point, right? If you have 50 Democrats in office, not every single Democrat is going to have the same legislative initiative as every other Democrat. A Democratic senator from West Virginia but, is going to be far different than a Democratic senator from California. But the infrastructure the bill is, is one of those things that defines the unity of the Democrats as a party, especially in this political moment where... It's a test of whether the Democrats can pass bills, right? If you yeah, can't Joe do this, you may as well not be Democrats a, you may as well not even be in the same party if you don't agree to pass this infrastructure yeah. bill. I, I I guess we can like talk about like political strategy because that's what this comes down to. Like Mansion and Cinema are not going to give up their seats to vote for something that's going to lose them a future election. Like I'm sorry, but that's just like the political reality. People seem to think like, oh, the Democrats are going to come together and vote. We don't have, we don't. There's only one national level thing that we do in the United States, and that's the presidential election. Otherwise, you've got 50 senators, two from each state, and you've got 438 uh, members of the House, and then one or two from DC that don't do anything. Um, they, like, and these people are all trying to win in their individual little districts. Now we come together 
under large wings of who we consider Republicans and who we consider Democrats. But that doesn't mean that every single person under that wing is going to vote the exact. So hold on, cinema. Well, they've got a majority. So hold on, cinema and 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 hold on. Let me finish responding. You talk for like twenty minutes, okay? When when you have a quote unquote majority that's literally a tiebreaker by by the vice president, you're talking about the slimmest fucking margins in the world. Trump had the exact same problems when he had um, even bigger margins when he couldn't repeal and replace uh, the ACA. Like he ran into similar problems too, where he couldn't get part of his legislative agenda passed. He didn't get the wall done like he wanted to. You know, Um, we have a lot of problems with gridlock right now in the Senate. That's why things like the nuclear option become a problem. That's why we have people like trying to get rid of the filibuster. Like I agree that gridlock is a problem, but you can't say like, well, look, we got you your 50 senators. Where's all of this key legislation coming from? Because that's not going to happen because by definition, any political party that includes a ton of people at the very edges is going to have people that are more moderate that are going to have to be catered to when it comes to passing legislation with incredibly slim majorities. So I don't know why you mentioned uh, Trump having problems too, because it's also my view that the Republican Party is ultimately doomed as well. The Republican Party right now is Trump's party. If it's something beyond Trump's party, then the party is doomed to collapse. So it's Trump's party right now. Any Republican who's not on board with Trump, I don't see having a future within the so-called Republican Party. Would you party. bet on any of this? Would you bet on a third party? Um, like is it Destiny? Here, here, here's my issue. Past, like, no, no, I, I'm going to simplify the issue. Or... Here's my issue. You keep using this language like, would you bet on the prospects? Is it going to happen? At what point? I get that there are objective realities in politics. Like you, I'm not a utopian. I don't think that politics is just based on my personal moral moral views and my personal ideology. I get it. There are objective realities that reject the objective uh, realities of people's sentiments and beliefs or whatever. But at what point does will actually make a difference in politics? At what point do you have to stand up and work for something and build something and fight for something that there doesn't exist any immediate precedent for? If the actual innovators in the history of American politics had your mentality, we would have no change in the history of American politics at all. There would be no Abe Lincoln. There would be no uh, Franklin Roosevelt. There would be, maybe even there would be no uh, John F. Kennedy, or maybe, if it depends on where you fall in the political spectrum, maybe no Richard Nixon. You have to take risks. You have to fight for some things for which there doesn't exist any immediate precedent for, because you can't keep deferring to what is the current reality. The current reality isn't just objective. It also includes subjective realities. And there's a certain point where you have to step in and actually have will in politics. So the reason why nobody would, would vote on third parties is because you guys know that they're not a possibility. Like, you won't even vote with odds, right? What like do you if mean? If I were to ask you, is there a 10% chance that your party will make Then I'll give you 10 one odds on somebody like making... Wait, wait, wait. Destiny, I want a third party to be built. Yeah. So if you want to build a third party, okay, you keep saying that like if people uh, thought like you, nothing would happen. Then build. Then start. Building. That that is what you I'm doing. That is what I'm doing. Aid. But in order to build a, but Destiny, in order to build a third party, I'll explain it simply. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's 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 walk it back a little bit. If I want to build a third party, which is my goal, then I'm not going to I'm not going to enter a debate. What I'm gonna have is Destiny finish what he was saying about the betting, and then I'm gonna have him bring it to infrared to respond. Uh, and I'll count personally how long your response is, and I'll keep it under a minute and 30 seconds for both of you. Okay, gotcha. I'm just trying to respond to what was said. So, like, um, if you want to build something, then start building something. Building something doesn't mean doing whatever gets you the most views on YouTube or Twitch, because shilling for third parties is, like, the most, like, extremist, popular, cool thing that you can do. That's literally all it is. There's no real building going on by advocating for an extreme position that you yourself, because you won't even put money on it, know is an absolute pipe dream fantasy. It's an incredibly privileged position to take from behind your computer screen, because it's, it sells well, it's cool, it's nice to make YouTube titles, title that or whatever, but when it comes to real people that need real help, this type of shit doesn't help. You know, you mentioned soup kitchens and shit earlier. If you want to get real effective political change, find a local candidate to support. You can do national level fundraising or international fundraising in order to support local candidates at a city level or even at a state level. Or work on like mutual aid programs, these different systems that can exist that can subsume and then replace these capitalist systems. You know, you can replace things like food stamps or daycare or other things. You can build these programs out as well. Or find a union that has a political slant and support them. Build them up. Raise money for that stuff. Like all of these things are things that you can do if you want to affect real political change. Just ho- hopping on to the most popular election that you can to get as many views as possible and then just try to claim oh i'm doing things to make the world better no you're not you just want to be on the presidential election push your candidate because that will get you that's what gets you the most views the most money and the most donations okay well uh, i have a minute and 30 seconds so look destiny if you if people can't like i said you didn't actually address the two arguments you didn't address the argument about how national elections because it's about information war plus organization are what define 
uh, politics up and down the ballot, okay? And if I'm going to advocate for a third party, which is what I'm doing, I'm not going to tell people to vote for the Democrats. I'm going to get people mad about the Democrats. I'm going to get people mad about the Republicans, and I'm going to broadcast as best of my ability using my platform to get people to go out and build a third party and focus if they want to get involved in politics and do that work and they have free time to do it. Focus your energy on building a third party to whom it may concern. So if I'm interested in building a third party, that's what I'm going to say. You're saying I'm only doing this for views which is interesting, people like Hassan Piker dwarf me in views. And um, that's also a pun, I guess. But they dwarf me in views, and they don't advocate for a third party right now. So I don't know why you're saying that's like something that's... Uh you know, that's something that's only doing it for clicks and for views. I'm taking a lot of risks taking the position that I am, and it has paid off, but that was based on risk, Destiny, not precedent. Uh, this, the other thing you said is that... Uh, you guys know no one's going to vote for a third party. I don't think that's true. I think when you look at what Americans believe in terms of the issues and you look at the platforms of the respective political parties, there is such a vast uh, difference between those two things that I think the situation is very ripe for a third party right now. And like I said, if people can't vote for their own interests, because you use the soup kitchen charity argument, oh, go vote and, and help people personally. If people can't vote in their own interests because the poor people aren't the ones who are voting. Those people you're saying are victims and need our help, they don't vote. If they can't vote in their own interests, why do we have a democracy? Okay. Uh, I mean, why have democracy? I mean, they have the ability to vote, but I mean, like... Third yeah, but what's the point of saying? democracy if you're just going to vote on behalf of I, other I people? I I, 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 well, I mean, like, and again, like you said, just like all the pro, uh, all the progressives, like, what's the point of democracy if you won't support my people? Like, why aren't you guys like? No, I'm saying if like you're if your reason for voting is for other people, and those people aren't going to be getting out there and voting for themselves, why the fuck do we even have democracy? Why don't you advocate for an undemocratic technocracy in which destiny does policies for people's best interests? Ping shilling minute fifty. Okay, so we're gonna throw it over to destiny to, to respond. Okay, so. When you talk about how, first of all, your position, well, okay, so you, you vote in the ways that you do, ideally to uh, make a better world for yourself, better world for other people. I guess it depends on why people vote. This idea that, like, you're voting for poor people that don't vote, I just, I don't understand. You're fundamentally doing the same thing. No, I'm not. Um, I, like, except, and you're trying to say also, again, just like, like, really far left progressives would say, it's like, oh, these people, they really support us, they just don't know it yet. Oh, they would support our policies, they just don't know it yet. I mean, like, if there's all these poor people out here that aren't voting, like, why haven't third parties made the argument to them to get them out to vote? It just doesn't happen. They don't go out and they don't vote for third parties because third parties don't have any like local or state or third parties don't attract their attention the state. so there's like no there's no Th point third in parties right? aren't getting their attention uh, right now also when you talk about how like everything you've done is based on risk not precedent absolutely not people come out with extreme points of view all the time that was your entire branding was being the most extreme motherfucker you possibly could be every single person in here knows it your entire branding is being abrasive and screaming they're like a 2016 destiny that supports a third party instead of one of the two primary ones um the idea that you can't focus energy on like building a third party on a local level also just doesn't make sense if it's something that's so fucking important to you that you think is so important you that you think matters so much well i mean what are you doing to help build a third party is it literally just the stuff that also coincidentally empowers you to make more money on youtube and twitch is it the stuff that helps you build audiences and networks and connections just like Hassan does on twitch or have you actually like you know stuck your neck out and done things to support third party candidates like are there any local or state level third party candidates you support or do you not give a fuck about any of that you just want to hop on and talk about presidential stuff because that's where all the viewership is well okay you're wrong on that account i have platformed local uh uh, people r running for local elections like Steven Estrada for the Communist Party of Long Beach in California. So you're completely talking out of your fucking ass. And the idea that I've built my entire brand on being the most extreme person possible, this is such a recklessly stupid thing to say that even surprises me coming from you. Um, my tone may be extreme, my style may be extreme, but in terms of the content of the views I've actually espoused, there's nothing extreme about them. I've reached out to conservatives, I've reached out to even to Trump people and right-wing people, and I've condemned uh, uh, far-left extremism. Uh, I've condemned extremism across the board. I've called myself, almost ironically, a communist centrist. There's nothing extreme about the actual content of my views. The content of my views is actually very tame and reasonable. Now, the optics wise and that the spectacle i put up is extreme but that doesn't actually reflect the things i say if you discount my views on history and maybe communism and the soviet union and, and maybe china maybe that would be considered extreme in the united states but in terms of what i advocate for here there's nothing extreme about it 
So yeah, there is, like I said, and especially that's especially why there's no precedent for a guy like me, a self-proclaimed Marxist Leninist who doesn't pander to the extremists and ultra leftists um, that you know that that say, oh yeah, all elections and politics are meaningless. We should just advocate for revolution now and, and direct action, whatever the fuck they say. Um, which is ironically sometimes something Hassan on the low key flirts with, but he doesn't advocate for entirely. Um, I really forgot the other shit you said before, so refresh my memory. How, how can you say you're not an extreme when you literally are talking about like skewing both political parties and voting third party only? Yeah, a, a th but because I, I think... Do you think in the United States those aren't extreme do, positions? Do you think we live in an extreme time here in the United States? I think with, re I rel thinks they live re in relative to the political climate, what I'm advocating for is very moderate. You think that a Marxist Leninist in the United States right now is a moderate position to be in? I don't you think, think I, I don't think right right now, right now, as politics? far as the majority of people are concerned, I don't think Marxist Leninist positions um, have their attention or have any significance among them. But Put my Marxism Leninism aside. I'm advocating for a big tent third party that will reach out to people across the political aisle who merely agree upon the fact that the current political establishment is insular and gate kept, that doesn't allow up and coming people with bright ideas. People like uh, maybe initially before he his political. Uh, you know, change of tone. Maybe people like Andrew Yang and all these people who have innovative political ideas, whatever you want, even libertarians, uh, the Ron Paul people, whatever whatever you want, we can all agree that regardless of where we stand politically and ide ideologically, if you're not part of the big club, which is the current establishment, who's in bed with special interests, and who all know each other, and who all attend their families' weddings and their families, you know, um, uh, events and social gatherings if you don't know these people you don't have a future in politics right now so i think there needs to be a big tent people's party a third party that is about saving american democracy from these um entrenched two parties which have gate kept the ability for politics to actually give expression to what the american people actually want and like i said would you deny that there's a disconnect between the actual policy platforms that Americans mostly agree upon and the platforms of the respective parties? Because most Americans agree with e each other when it comes to meat and potatoes issues. And that's so not... That, people say this all the time, that meat and potatoes yeah. issues... Quick, Americans your gain issues. on your mic, you probably should lower it a little bit. People are having this, this is... Uh, I don't know what... This is not my mic, so I don't... I don't know how to work this uh, mic. Okay, we'll make yeah. do then. Destiny, continue. Yeah, so, I, so I mean, I'm gonna hold you to one thing, I guess, because you you're dancing away from every other point. Like, you are an extremist. I, I don't know how you could say that you're not an extremist. Like, when you advocate for a third party and you wait, which to point was I dancing from? Political parties, then by definition, like, I'm not saying extremist is bad, or maybe you want to avoid like the moral loading of the word, but like you you must have some pretty extreme positions. And by your own admission, there are these no. huge nets that are cast by the Republican and the Democratic Party, and you're not caught by either one of those. Um, I don't even think this is the most extreme time in U.S. history, and I would still say that you have like very extreme political views. Like being okay. a Marxist Leninist is just a pretty extreme. Unless, unless you're going to say that, like, oh, you know, there's tons of MLs in the United States, which I think every lefty would shoot themselves if you unironically believe that. Like, there's no way everybody knows this. When you talk about how the Republicans and the Democrats are gatekeeping politics, I mean, like, inorganically, there's probably some extent to this going on in terms of like deciding who gets to be hosted at large uh, debates and whatnot. Like, I'm, I'm sure we can say this happens, but um, also organically, this probably happens as well because the Democratic and the Republican Party are so huge because they include so many different beliefs because they include so many different types of people then by definition it's going to be a little bit exclusionary because if you want to run as a third party like chances are depending on where you are you could probably just run as a republican or a democrat and you'd be fine bernie sanders is relatively extreme but when he runs for president he runs as a democrat you know um the idea that also that like all Americans agree, like you, you keep repeating this argument over and over again, and I'm, it sounds nice, but I'm sorry, but like people have ran with these arguments over and over again. Everybody agrees with me, they just don't know it. Americans agree with me, they just don't have ML ideas in their head. They just don't know it, they just don't know it. Okay, well then the onus is on you to get these views out in front of them and prove it, because right now, it kind of just sounds like a whole bunch of copium, where it's like, oh, trust me, they'd love my platform if they just knew about it. A lot of people know about these platforms, they just don't like them that much. Um, and then finally, I don't think there is agreement broadly on like the quote unquote meat and potatoes issues, because we've got these huge political divides, again, 
that you've said do exist in the United States. It's hard to say Americans agree on meat and potatoes issues when Republicans and Democrats are more polarized than they ever have been when it comes to how to address the problems in the United States. Meat and potatoes issues might be something like, you know, the earned income tax credit or child tax credit, which are like hardly democratically supported things. Meat and potato issues might be things like who should get health care, which is something that is supported by the uh, Democratic Party, not the Republican Party. Um, you know, free education or easy access to education. Time. Yeah. Um, so you saying my position is extreme because I'm advocating for a third party. Well, I don't I like I said, you didn't address my argument. We live in an extreme political climate in which a third party is not something that's so extreme. But if you look at the, the election of Trump and all the shit that's gone down for the past, you know, four years or, or, or more. Yeah, I don't I just don't see it as extreme. You say, oh, you're extreme because you're a Marxist Leninist. Well, I just don't think the Americans are familiar with what Marxism Leninism is or how Marxism Leninism um, might actually be something or Marxist Leninist leaders, at least might be people that they're interested in. I'm trying to make the case and uh, show them that I don't expect the majority of Americans to have sympathetic views toward Marxism Leninism or to my specific ideology, and I don't blame them for it. I'm trying to make the case, and I think Marxist Leninists need to prove that um, the dialectical materialism and um, uh, Marxism is actually useful in being able to actually uh, maneuver politically and, and win politically. So that's something I actually want to prove in practice. Now, I think the main thrust of your argument is basically that. See, I'm in a position where I'm able to experiment. You're saying, oh, it's copium that you're thinking that everyone agrees with you. Wait, I'm not necessarily saying everyone agrees with me. But what I am doing is I'm, I'm trying to establish an ability to experiment with what people really want and just be open to the fact that what people really want in this country is different from what's being represented to them in the form of the establishment. Whether this establishment is, is gate-capped organically or inorganically is completely irrelevant. I don't care whether it's inorganic or organic. But it's actually funny that one of the examples for inorganic gatekeeping was something that had to actually be proven by WikiLeaks. Um, and that's the only reason you fucking know about it in the first place. If it wasn't for WikiLeaks, we, we wouldn't have even have known about that. So who knows what else goes goes on behind the scenes. But Wait, What was proven by WikiLeaks exactly? Just the um, the collaboration between CNN and um, Hillary Clinton in the Democratic debates. Sure. So that was definitely bad, but I don't think that rises to the level of gatekeeping, right? Where somebody was passing off questions. It shouldn't have happened, but that, that gatekeeping, that, an argument. It well, it, it makes it harder... Uh, for people we, like Bernie Sanders to perform yeah, as could. well. It was, it was bad. It was horrible. She got so it's gatekeeping. They're gatekeeping the party from outsiders, perceived yeah. outsiders. Sure, but Bernie also came up through the Democratic Party. And You're right. Ran in that primary and in both of them, enjoyed a great deal of support within the Democratic Party, right? Yeah. So to say that he's like an example of like gatekeeping, that's a pretty shitty job at gatekeeping if that's the case. Well, they they well, the point is, is he rose so much from scratch without any institutional support within the Democrats. And even then they had to work against them. So I think that's actually a really good example of gatekeeping. If arguably like one of the most successful politicians in the past like five years, just in terms of like national media coverage during a presidential election is somebody that was gate kept. I mean, in that case, I don't care about gatekeeping because I guess it doesn't work very well if Bernie Sanders is able to do it off of small donations without enjoying any. Well, because support. the small the small uh, donations were something that were not anticipated by the political elite within the Democrats or the Republicans. They even when it came to Trump, who didn't primarily rely on small donations, I know that, but none of them anticipated. Hey, this is just about money. Anyone with enough money can basically rival what we're doing. And they never entertained the possibility because like you, Destiny, back in 2016 or 2015, they were all sitting around and saying, ah, nothing new under the sun. It's always been the same. Everything's been the same. There's no possibility Trump's going to win the Republican primary. He won it. Oh, there's no possibility he's going to win the election. He won it. Oh, there's no possibility that a guy like Bernie has a chance. He did have a good chance. You know what I'm saying? People like you have always been on the losing side of actual history, especially Wait, recent none history. None of this makes sense because all of the people that you're talking about exist within the realm of the main two political parties. You're yeah, yeah, I know, but I but why you but think that, like, I this, I this is an example of anything that supports your. I I, I don't. I, 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 listen, I I was a Destiny. You're you're neglecting. For a great Hold on, you're you're neglecting that I was a Bernie supporter in 2016. 
So I wanted Bernie to win. I was fully on board I, with I'm Bernie. Not talking about you being I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm just. There was going to be a great realignment of like I, political party. Third party is going to rise and do something. It seems like like 2016. I never said third parties are going to spontaneously rise and do something. I've always been consistent about the fact that this is something that requires will, not deference to some external objective reality. Second of all, I advocated. I was a Bernie supporter back in 2016. All I've done is in in contrast to you, the so-called omni liberals and the Hassan Psalm, chapel people whoever the hell these people are i am trying to seriously and honestly reflect upon the reasons for bernie's failure now it's not just the establishment it's also an issue internally that i've also r relentlessly critiqued and ruthlessly critiqued before but it stands uh as far as my views are concerned and i haven't seen you address this in any substantive way that the time is ripe for a third party if the time is ripe for the third party then where are they like, all, De like destiny all, I when i'm saying the time is ripe have, i'm like, talking to destiny wait, now the no, time is ripe now wait, i don't it, you want me to point to you f I, I, an example from five years ago when i'm talking about now we should be hey, getting up and work like destiny we should work to build a third party now that's what i'm trying to say i'm not saying we should it, sh it should have been done uh two years ago or three years ago forget about that it, obviously it hasn't happened yet but that's what i'm here to make the case for it's almost like if someone tells you hey destiny can you go to the grocery store and get me go some groceries saying oh why haven't i gotten you groceries before like yeah, that, 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 i'm telling you to do it now you know what i mean like your argument doesn't make any sense okay all i'm saying is that if the time is ripe for a third party then where is it I can't argue against this like nirvanistic, like I don't want to say fallacy, but this this nirvana that you're presenting. It's like the time is right. It's gonna happen now. It's gonna happen now. It's gonna like. I'm no, sorry, I didn't like, say I it's gonna happen. I'm saying it should happen. Oh, okay, well, it may not. Okay, wait, 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 Haas. I'll give him. I'm doing the 130, 130. I swear to God, you will have equal time to talk. I just want to make sure I, people can hear what he's saying. Uh, Destiny. Where are the third parties, okay? Like, it's funny because I accused you of engaging in massive copium, and then you literally engaged in massive copium. Like, Americans just don't know what ML is. Like, if they just, if they all, if these poor people that didn't even know how to vote uh, knew what dialectical materialism is, they would understand the material conditions they live in. And they No, I didn't say that. You're taking words out of like, my mouth. You, and they, no, you, That's not I what I said. I literally wrote down that you mentioned I, I said, I said, I said, uh, I said I, dialectical I literally, materialism. I literally wrote, I'm just going to keep talking. I literally wrote quotes. I'm writing quotes. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't quote. say. I said. I, I said they. They experience. could see. Americans just don't. Know I see. I said. Quote. I said. It can. Dialectical materialism. Quote. I can maneuver. Or yeah. Can here's what I said about dialectical materialism. Is, destiny. Destiny. Here's, is existing. You're, you're taking. You're it? taking. Is you're taking my words out of context. I said. The, uh, here's what I said about dialectical materialism. I basically just said that it could be proven that political partisans who are equipped with dialectical oh materialism God. can I, prove their. Anything you're saying. You got to back up from the mic. Can prove their uh, can prove their ability as political leaders and organizers and lead by example and therefore prove the merit of dialectical materialism in practice. I'm not talking about you know uh, disseminating esoteric theories and, and philosophies to people that they they secretly care about dialectical materialism. I'm just saying the utility of dialectical materialism is something that can be proven in practice by means of um, savvy and and um, conscientious political operatives who are using these theories to actually win people over and uh, and win victories. Now, has it happened yet? No, it hasn't, but that's why I'm here, because I believe it can happen. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But to, to say that I'm coping when I'm merely talking about something I think should happen and something that I'm committing to tr uh, contribute as best as I can to happen is ridiculous. If I say, oh, I'm going to try and do something, uh, oh, that's copium. Why? Because okay, I'm enter is, why? Because I'm entertaining the possibility. Oh, well, well, well. Okay, uh, Haz, you have twenty seconds left. I want to why? Why? Because I'm entertaining the possibility that it can happen. If I fail, I'll learn from my failure and and adapt. That's what praxis means. But I'm not going to sit idly and have this guarantee in an establishment which has had decades to prove its uh, itself to the American people and has failed. So I'm going to keep failing and get better. And how is that cope? I don't understand. 
So you keep saying people want something that's not being represented by the establishment. Yeah. What is it in your mind that a third party can offer that's not being represented by the establishment? Sure. I think when it comes to um, broad issues, like, for example, uh, how exactly are we going to address this fourth industrial revolution and this um, rapid change in the uh, nature of jobs and work and the way people are employed? Wait, is that especially literally not what the infrastructure bill aims to do. The infrastructure can't even get passed. Not yet. It hasn't. It's been. not, and and, and it's been slimmed bill, down so fucking bill, much. It's the infrastructure bill that's being pushed by one of. You're the not getting your infrastructure had. bill. Wait. You're not getting that bill. Okay, if, if, if Fred, do you want to expand? It's still your time, so if you want to expand. You yeah, yeah. Beforehand. You're not going to... That's the worst thing you could have said, Destiny. The infrastructure bill is precisely an example of why the things Americans need can't actually be get uh, get done under the leadership of the two parties or, or the Democratic Party right now. I mean, it's the worst thing you could have said, debate-wise. You know, wow, take the L. Anyway... Um, what you said about um i was losing my train okay, of so thought when you say how exactly are we going to address this fourth industrial revolution of yeah. rapid change of nature of jobs right yeah. So this word salad of yang shit okay okay so the infrastructure bill literally aims to try to address some of that and it but fails you're to you're telling me that the it infrastructure fails bill can't even pass with 50 democrats in the senate yeah how the fuck is a third party going to make a measure because because a here? third party is actually going to overcome the false divisions created by the Republicans and Democrats, and in my view, and I'm going to at least work to give it a shot, unify the American people on the basis of their, what I consider, common interests. I don't think that... What are the false divisions? Wait, what are the false... Can we do point by point instead of the 30-minute... Yeah, I think, for what example... What are the false divisions yeah, created? One of the reasons... Yeah, the divisions between the Republicans and Democrats don't actually reflect, in my view, authentic, objective intra, uh, div, uh, in divisions as far as the real interests of the American people are concerned. Rather, they are niche cultural, um, you know, propaganda, ideological differences that completely go beyond, materially speaking, what matters. Uh, to the American people. You to decide, so if there is somebody that's literally a single, so my mom, for instance, is a single issue voter on things like abortion. How yeah. are you to decide for a voter, oh, that doesn't matter to you? Because you, you abor abortion is the like thing that brought her to be passionate about politics. What? Abortion is the thing that drew her into being passionate about politics. Okay. And running off of a mass movement, a mass popular movement, will draw a great deal of people disillusioned or otherwise uninterested by the current political system and political uh, alternatives to be interested in politics. Trump got a lot of people to be interested in politics who other otherwise wouldn't have been. Uh, Bernie also did that. So the reasons you're rambling, you're not answering the, the, the <laughs> reasons why people are interested in politics differ, and this is the explanation for single issue voters, because that issue was this ideological and, and religious and, and um, narrative that suffice to actually draw them to be interested in politics in the first place. The question is, if we live in a democracy, why are there single issue view voters? Why isn't it enough to be interested in, in, in politics for the sake of fighting on behalf of what you consider your interest or the people's interest? Well, it's precisely because we have a very big deficiency within our so-called democracy. And I think a third party should run on a uh, on the position of um saving okay, so american I'm democracy just the question. Or, so who are you to say that some of these social issues that people single issue vote on how can you call that a false division when that is a real division and those issues are important to those because people? because at the end of the day way of them but yeah be because at the end of the war. day the way in which it actually impacts their life is not all that significant or profound so, you're, so then you're, you're retreating back to the argument earlier where like they just don't know what's good for them but i'm going to show them so that they know what's good for i them. i i definitely believe the american people right now do not necessarily know uh or have articulated the language of of what their interests are but i don't i'm not like saying you, i already know but that? but like, but and this is where you're creating a straw man which is un unsustainable as far as what i've actually said i'm not claiming to know exactly what it is the american people want all i'm committing to is a willingness to reach out and discover what that is i'm just rejecting the idea that the only manifestation of the american people's interest is being reflected at the level of the two-party system okay so that's awesome but right now, we're not talking about politics then. So politics is trying to secure. So politics is about securing political power. That's what it's about. If you're not claiming to know what people want, then you can't have a platform that represents No, actually, them. politics... You're trying to discover yeah. what people want. Po you're not politics in politics. is about... You're not engaged in politics Yeah, yeah, po at that point. politics... Like hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, wait, okay. 
Pause for a moment. I just want to say to both of you. If we're both talking at the same time, nobody hears shit. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know, but if I yeah, stop, yeah. he just keeps wait, wait, talking. Yeah. Okay, he, this guy's talking like twice as much as me. Yeah, yeah. Destiny, yeah. stop crying. Thing. Stop wait, crying, okay. Destiny. Okay, so anyway, okay. politics okay, is... Wait, okay, I did it. Okay, the, my major rule, my one rule is when I'm talking, nobody else is talking. Okay? I'm not going to move on that. So, since the the problem is when you do the point by point, people are interrupting more. And when it comes to the other thing, when you do five minute diatribes, people don't want five minute diatribes. So I'm going to do my best to control this, but I'm just going to, like, I'm going to have this... Destiny, go. I'm gonna slow. I'm gonna try to shorten it to 30 seconds to one minute instead, sure. so it could be more. So Destiny, then Haas, and we'll do 30 seconds okay. to one minute, so it could be more point by point. But also... I want to go point by point. But the problem is, if I try to go point by point, when I go one point, he goes like another. Dude, stop whining. Just, just roll like, with so it. So much like talking. And then stop bitching. You're wasting over. time, dude. I got places to be. I, you, obviously, you don't if you agreed to do this. You have no obligation to be here. So when you said that you're not claiming to know what people want, if that's the case, then you're not doing politics. Politics is all about like representing constituents. We live in a democracy. Unless you want to be some authoritarian dictator, by definition, if you're doing political action, you're doing action on behalf of other people to secure some type of political power. For you to try to skirt all of that and to avoid any like responsibility or strong claims or, or put a stake in the ground saying, this is what I believe in and this is what I think they want, and to just say, I'm just trying to reach out and discover, go be a pollster. Yeah, that's philo it's a philosophically and politically, uh, ideologically untenable view or whatever, because politics is about building power, but one of the aspects of uh, real politics is a genuine openness as to what uh, being able to listen to the people. I mean, if you want to talk about I'm a Marxist-Leninist, to me, I learned this from Maoism. It's something called the mass line. You don't necessarily begin with the assumption you know what the people want. You just have a willingness to build an institution, to build an apparatus, to build some kind of organization from which you are going to enter into a certain dialectic or dialogue or interaction, if you want to use a less loaded term, with the masses of people. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you already know what they want you will discover what they want by actually drawing a base of contact with them and drawing support from them and and, and reaching out to them and media is probably the most important part of that media was the foundation of for example the russian bolshevik party medium was the foundation probably of every alternative uh, revolutionary or third party in the history of uh in the history of the world so, so i so like I, I mean like I've done conversations like this before. So uh, it's so strange as much as you hate Vosh, you talk so much like him. You say so much and so little at the same time. So like boiling down everything that you said before about how when you engage in your political practices, you will discover what the people want is a direct contradiction to what you said earlier when you said, and I quote, people want something different that's not being represented by the establishment. How do you know people truly want something that's not being represented by the establishment if you don't even know what they want yet? And part of Because that's illogical. Just be, I, I can know not, what people... Well, what wait, I just wait, said wait, was wait, not, wait, wait. I just said the one minute's back and forth, Destiny. Yeah, what I said is not illogical. I'm just literally following and I'm writing in quotes like your very own statements. I guess if you want to address that contradiction, then go, how can you know yeah, I'll address you something it. different that's not being represented by the establishment, but then go on and admit, I don't know what people want. Yeah, I'm let's address it. That as I do, like, let's let's, let's address experiment. it. Like, again, you haven't even described to me like what's missing. Yeah, yeah, you, Destiny, Destiny. That they don't Destiny, have, it's, it's very simple like, logic. You, know you can know what people don't want without knowing exactly what they want positively. I, for example, if someone doesn't want to eat shit, you don't know what their favorite food is. They just don't want to eat the shit. You just said something completely stupid and illogical. If people don't want to eat the shit, then why did a record number of people vote for it in the last election? Because there was a steaming pile of diarrhea in their view that was the alternative to that shit. Yeah, but they could have just not voted. You have some of the most engaged voters in the history of presidential Yeah, voting. because How it was a referendum on Trump. Now you're here, and you it's can't Trump pass bills. Trump. Your it's government Trump. doesn't even fucking work. You're here it's now. Government works exactly it, 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 it was a referendum on Trump. You voted uh, right. out, out Trump. Here you are. The government... The gov Destiny, you know what government's about, right? It's not about to own the other side. It's actually about to get things done. Our government can't get things done. It, we can't even pass a basic fucking infrastructure bill. You won that. You, yeah, there was a record number turnout. I was advocating for people to not vote, to boycott the vote. Well, you got Biden in power. Here our government is. And it doesn't even fucking work. What have you won, Destiny? What have you the won? The government is not about getting things done. That's What's what it about? The government's job is. The government's job is to represent the will of the people. So okay, how, government... how is the will of the people being represented right now? Because this country is historically divided and polarized in ways that it probably never has been. So how is it being represented? What? How is the will of the people being represented right now?
The will of the people is being represented right now because half of Americans don't agree with the other half on what should happen. So the government is having a really hard time getting anything done. But that's what you would expect from a government that is representing the democratic interests of the people. This country is legitimately divided. Biden got more votes than any president in U.S. history, and Trump was number two. So obviously, there's going to be a difficult time if the government's power is logically extended. So to, from to you, the only the, the only site that there's at going to be a really hard time for the government to get anything done. Of so course. the only site at which the will of the people can ever find representation is in the current established options they have on the shelves there's not a possibility for a different product in your view it's only what's on the shelf could be a possibility. and you and you can you claim this more moreover and all you've told me is you're going to try to more, moreover you can you can claim screen. this with absolute certainty somehow never said that it is okay. possible that in the future there might be conditions that arise destiny that i need you to understand arise. but the problem is that two yeah. political parties are destiny, right logically speaking both in our media and our finances and in our government and in everybody's De minds, destiny logically really speaking for a third party to rise yeah, up yeah. maybe you need to know something about like uh third party even should you haven't even given me like positions like all of it when i asked you like what can a third party offer that the primary two can your your response was like uh how are we going to address the fourth industrial revolution and rabbit you said oh, you're giving me a yang answer that's you're not telling me that's not a policy position that's not like hold on hold on this hold on like some vague shit that you could talk about hold on, on hold on i'm not a one destiny there are plenty of bright policy makers who want to be given a platform in this third party i confess i am not a policy maker obviously broad narratives are what's going to define entirely new parties yeah when i'm saying the something as vague as the fourth industrial revolution i am talking about a very broad issue that has to be addressed in an equally broad way and politically speaking now if it was just a matter of one or two policies it's not a matter of one or two policies it's not a matter of three policies or four policies it's a matter of a whole multiplicity of policies which are only unified by these broad uh narratives or whatever these broad uh, so-called word salads that you're giving if it was just the sum total of opposing policy prescriptions obviously um we wouldn't be talking about anything but it stands uh, right now that we can see that there actually is a certain reason why some policies are able to make it and others don't policies which don't threaten the special interests have a chance policies which threaten the current special interests don't have a chance so it's almost as simple as that. The two parties are bought out by special interests. Uh, I mean, well, that's a whole other conversation if you want to have that. But so like when you say like a whole multiplicity of policies that are painted by this broad narrative are what you're talking about. How, how do you then connect with earlier? You were saying poor people are like about like meat and potatoes issues. Are you going to have this multiplicity of, you know, political uh, discussion with them you're going to bring this like broad thing of new policies like every poor person yeah broad broad hold on broad broad hold on broad narratives are what give expression to people's belief that they can actually address their meat and potatoes concerns politically so i don't What's know what you're trying to say broad narrative that isn't encompassed by one of the two political parties no what, no, no, what is it? What is a oh. unique broad narrative? You're asking for what, what is a unique broad narrative. Sure. One of them is um, the current political system is rigged and it serves the interests of special interests and not the people. If we want to even have the ability to give political representation to the will of the people, we need a third party that's yeah, not I mean, um, already captured by these entrenched uh, established uh, interests and these special interests. Yeah, so literally, like both political parties say this all the time. The current political system, is, like the Demo the Republican Party right now believes the election was stolen. Trump constantly said about how the current political system is rigged. Bernie Sanders was a huge candidate. He said that parts of the political system are rigged. The Justice Democrats talk about all the time. Uh, do they about talk about the two-party system? Even Pelosi talks about yeah, yeah. corporate interests. So do they talk so about the two-party system? Narrative. What about the two-party system? Is that something they talk about? Uh, no. So you're well, that, that's your something I'm talking about. Your broad narrative that establishes your third party is there should be third parties. Yeah. There should be a third party. I, I, can't, I can't beat that one. That's, that, there, that there, the there, so there should be a third party. Before, I guess. Okay. Hold on. Destiny, let me ask you a question. What is democracy? Uh, I, I, that's a really broad What question. is the content of democracy? Group. Just what quickly. What? What's the content of democracy? Uh, ideally, it's some group of people whose will is being represented in some way. Okay, so what does that what does that look like concretely? Dem democracy on its own doesn't look like anything. I mean, we can talk about like a representative okay. democracy. We can talk about like the democracy well, if if States, if if, if my position is if my position is that a third party is the only manner by which American democracy can be um, restored or built or revived, however you want to phrase it, 
then obviously I don't, it's the burden is not upon me to say like, oh, this is specifically the issue that they have to focus upon. But there are many bright ideas. There are many ideas that people have. I personally think that we should be looking at the early 20th century and late 19th century um, issue of land reform, which was actually what formed the foundation um, inadvertently, at least, of the New Deal Democrats. Although they didn't pursue uh, direct land reform themselves, it actually had influence of, on the uh, housing reforms and the housing legislation that eventually would get uh, passed, especially, if I recall correctly, in the post-war era, right? I, I don't care what policies Americans supported 100 years ago. I'm sorry. I don't think that's politically relevant right now. No, I actually think it is relevant because I... I am also a political theorist and a theorist, so I don't know. We don't have to get in the nitty gritty of that. How is this meat and potatoes but, issue? But, American but, know but, anything about but, this. but, but, land reform is probably the most decisive um, uh, issue or policy that actually leads to political change historically. Okay, where? How do you know that most people care about this? Then, where do you find that support at? Well, because if you theorize politically, the basic social contract between a given state and its people lies in a state being able to give its people some kind of economic, and I don't mean this in like the loaded uh, leftist sense, some kind of means of production, just in the sense of like a solid economic basis with which they can actually engage in economic activity. So. Governments, if you look at almost any state in history, founds its basis upon this type of land grants or, or you know, giving titles of nobility and feudalism or during, you know, the time of the French Revolution, especially in the, with Napoleon. I don't want to get too in the nitty gritty of this, but yeah, land reform is a, a linchpin of political change and uh, of it's the foundation of states, whether it's directly phrased as land reform or not. Like the stability of the American state in the post-war era was sustained by, for example, those post-New Deal uh, housing policies and uh, things like that, which gave Americans like the minimum of a stable economic uh, livelihood. Can you give me an example of what is what, what do you mean by land reform? What type, what kind of land reform are we talking about? Well, today that could obviously either be um, actual land reform of giving people actual like just straight land and space. It could be something focused on housing, like what they're doing in China. They're giving giving grants of people to sink own single uh, home apartments. When you say giving people land, you mean we're going to do plots in Montana? We're going to giving that to people who live in California and hope they move out there? Or what do, you, what do you mean by giving people land? What happens to a G Giving people place? some kind of means of having like a minimal economic... It could even be UBI. I, you know, it could be a lot of things. But so it has UBI to be... The, land reform. It has to function as the equivalent to what land reforms have historically functioned okay, as you, politically. Do you, do you see okay, how wait, like... One second. We have 30 minutes left before this is over. So I think debt forgiveness is, is an well, important well, thing, too. Uh, Haas. Yeah. Do you have a hearing problem? Go ahead, Dylan. Okay, thank you. So, for the next 30 minutes, if you have any points you want to get in, now would be the time to get them in. I'm just telling you this now, so afterwards you're not like, fuck, I wanted to say this. So if there's anything in the back of your pocket that you have yet to bring up and you want to bring up, yeah. now would be the time. Okay. You leaving now? So you guys can get... No, I just want to say bye oh, okay. to Steven. Yeah. Hi, Steven. Hi, what's up? I'm just chilling. You like my outfit? I'm a vampire. Nice. Looks awesome. Thanks. I just want to say Is she hi. a third party vampire or a Democrat vampire? I'm um, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so whatever. He's British, so he doesn't participate in American politics. Ah, Boris Johnson vampire. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. They're kind of like matching costumes because Haas is a fucking time vampire over here, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. You can continue. You got 30 minutes. Left. I don't, I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, so like, I, I don't know, like, uh, I. This is every third party like debate ever. Like every time it's like the, our thing is going to come and it's the third party that represents the interests of the people that aren't being represented, but I don't really know what those interests are. And I was like, okay, well, like what, what, like, I'm not asking for specific policies, but just like broadly speaking, like what the fuck are we even, well, what about like land reform from the 19th century? And it's like, okay, no, no, no I, I like, said UBI. there could be a, like, well, what the fuck does that mean? Right? Like you're basically at the end of the day, like, and this is the problem with third parties. The, the problem is that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are incredibly broad. They encompass a lot of different political ideology. When you can go all the way left and find somebody like AOC or Bernie Sanders, and then all the way right and find somebody like Manchin or Cinema in the same political party, it's going to be really difficult for a third party to find space in there. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. There might be a third party that makes the case. We come up and like, hey, you know what? Here's some issues that people really care about, and nobody's talking about them, and we're going to come, we're going to hammer these issues, and we're going to start to gain political power doing it. But you haven't presented me any of those issues. 
1920s, talking about stuff that happened in the 1900s, or trying to talk about stuff that uh, is happening in China, like that's a good thing to sell to the American people. Like these are just not issues that are going to win with like the meat and potatoes poor people that you think aren't voting because they don't have a third party to represent them. Yeah, I think this whole debate really boils down to Destiny's inability to look beyond the appearance of things and actually think about what is the real essence behind these things. Like, why is it that Americans vote in the way they do? Why is it, for example, you just mentioned this, Americans have a negative view of China. Is that because they necessarily do, or is it because of a deeper and more fundamental reason? But regardless of the fact, I think it can be summed up uh, simply and neatly as this. Um, a, we are supposed to have a government by, for, and of the people. This is the standard to which we are supposed to hold the current uh, American government, as well as the current so-called representatives of the American people. My only claim is that they don't satisfy the criterion of a government by, for, and of the people, which works on behalf of the interests of the people, rather than special interests and entrenched interests and uh, insular establishments, which claim to represent the objective facts and the truth and the will of the people, but in actual fact and in actual reality, utterly fail to do that, just going off of the inability to get out widespread voter turnout, with the exception of these single you know, issue referendums, like the referendum on Trump, but even then turnout wasn't really that impressive as far as a democracy is concerned. Maybe relative to America, it's impressive, but if for a so-called democracy, it's really not that impressive. But um, I mean, the problem is that you haven't demonstrated like by, for, and of the people. None of these things describe third parties right now. You don't have any third parties by the people. They're all. They're well, all Destiny, that's the thing. No you, you don't you, have the, any third parties. The, 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 the here's the yeah, yeah. The difference. The dif you don't have any third parties wait, 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 of wait, wait, the people. Yeah, yeah. De Destiny, Destiny. The difference between me and you is that. You have the burden of defending the people who now do claim to represent the will of the people. All I'm saying is, I want to fight for an alternative. I want people to look at uh, things like movement, or now I think it's no longer movement, it's the People's Party right now. Look at big tent, broad coalition parties that are trying to build third parties in this country. And, um, you know, and, per and, and fight and build and don't be afraid to risk building those alternatives now the is reason there a single third party like that in the united states that you'd be comfortable putting money on getting a single federal seat or two federal seats well no because it's not a matter of a gamble this is actually a point in politics which this is all a gamble you admitted earlier that so so destiny this is the this is the single argument you have consistently been unable to respond to i doubt you're going to be able to respond sure, to well, it i'm sorry you just keep running away from it i'm writing it down go ahead you are treating th this reality as a matter of just this pure external objective thing outside of our will. I am saying there is a moment in politics in which actual will becomes decisive. I am not saying that on its own there's this party that's going to make it. We have to fight to make it that way. Because this is a moment that demands our actual will, our actual intervention. Why would I even be here? Why would I even be live? Why would I even be talking about this if I didn't think people actually have to do something and actually have the will to um, fight for this? If I thought it was just going to happen on its own, I wouldn't even be streaming right now, Destiny. Can you summarize that? Yeah, um, I'm not saying something's just going to happen on its own spontaneously. I am actually using my platform to fight for this alternative, to convince people, specifically politically conscientious and educated people with spare time to care about politics, to do this, right? They haven't okay, done it yet. Can you, you say I'm not responding to time, can you state this in the form of an argument? What is the argument here? Um, can you demonstrate I didn't make an argument if you want to do that game? I'm not trying to play a game. So this is what you said. You're treating this reality as a matter of pure external. Yeah, because you're asking like what will. you're asking like There's what current you're, you're asking what current third party you just asked Destiny. Destiny, Destiny. I gotta hear. I, okay, can we stop for a second? I didn't hear what the question was. So Destiny, can you restate the question so we can have how to respond to the question? I just, I don't know what the argument is I'm supposed to respond to. That there's going to be some magical shonen s narrative figure that's going to come up that we're all going to put our will behind. Like you can't like. Hold on, you like just question. you it just avoided like the argument again. Kid, honestly. Yeah, you you and just admire, you, you, it's not I, clicking for you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Destiny, it's 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 not Destiny, it's it's not clicking for you. Yeah. 
it's just not clicking for you. You just said again. Sorry. Oh, oh. Just repeated you word for word. You just said, oh, Destiny, you're really angry. You need to chill. You just said, Destiny, it's okay. It's just the internet. Destiny, you just said a Naruto guy is going to appear out of nowhere. You just made the argument again, the straw man that I'm saying something is just going to happen out there. You literally ignore and dodge the argument. What I'm literally saying is no, I'm not saying something is just magically going to happen. I'm advocating people to do things, mm -hmm. to so actually like make it happen. Getting to, right? So if you are on the end of this saying, no, I'm advocating for this. I want to intervene. I want to have some sort of intervention. I'm going to fight to make this. What are you fighting for? And when your answer to what are you fighting for is, well, I'm going to ask people and find out. Like, you're, you're putting the car before the horse. You're already no, no, no. I'm fighting for a... Have some huge hold on. Fight I am fighting for an alternative. You what you're offering yet. No, you don't no. even know. Other than these, like, empty platitudes hold on. of, like, the fourth industrial revolution and the dialectical materialistic way of analyzing the labor Yeah, you're using words thing. you don't understand. Like, it's nobody okay. Nobody cares about this. Yeah, but, 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 no but, American, but, especially no meat and potatoes poor voting American, gives a fuck about anything. But it's, no it's, it's not their job. I don't even the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna get to. So, Destiny, YouTube, it's it's not like, the job of. Me, okay, okay, I, I gotta finish responding. I have to do it. Okay, can you please Jesus. respond? Yeah. Move it over like, like, if you were to come here and you were like, you know what? I think that there are these three or four things. None of these political parties are talking about this shit. We need to do something. Instead, you literally admitted earlier the biggest point for why your third party is arguing something that nobody else is arguing. That biggest point was that they were arguing in favor of a third party. That's it. That was the most unique thing about a third party is that they want a third party to exist. When you're actually willing to admit that foundational epistemic circularity for your entire justification for existing it's like well, what the fuck is even the point of what you're doing right that's like saying like hey you've got two teams in basketball we should have a third team why because nobody else is advocating for a third team well what's that third team gonna do advocate for itself to exist okay no no, no. yeah let point? me be very clear so destiny it's not the job of ordinary people to care about all this complex stuff i am but for someone who like goes on stream and acts like they're like this extremely politically informed person and this like smart guy it is actually your job to sit the fuck down and actually try to think this through a little bit. You can't feign ignorance and pretend to be some dipshit fucking League of Legends gamer, which you are, admittedly, but you're pretending to be the contrary. So you have to bear with me and not, you know, oh, dialectical, just because you don't like don't know these theories and you're just an ignorant person. It's not really an excuse. Now, second of all, Destiny, um, my position has been very clear. You're saying, oh, all you're advocating is for a third party. Yeah, but for why? Because... Policies can't even be passed, which go against the interests of special and interests. A third party can't pass them. Yeah, but I think a third party can. What's the point? Destiny, D D Dylan, Dylan, can you shut this guy up? Am I talking or no? I just told him. Yeah, even... Destiny, Destiny. My whole position is a third party can actually give representation, enter into contact with the American people, put forward policies and proposals that are going to work for the interests of the American people, and there's not going to be special interests or captured, entrenched, established interests which are going to uh, stop them or prevent them, okay? Now, as far as what the, exactly that's going to look like, what you're demanding of me is an absurdity. You're basically saying I should single-handedly draft every single detailed policy proposal Matter of this third that. party without actually let him finish this yeah he's he's extremely immature it's okay uh he's used to league of legends but anyway um destiny you're basically trying to say that i need to personally you know draft these points but all I'm just, you're saying, oh, it's so stupid that you're just saying there should just be a third party. But that's just because we know the current two parties can't give expression to what the American people want, not on the basis of the merit of these ideas and, and, and the policies, but because of these external um, overgrowths on our American democracy. When I'm saying I want a third party, all I'm effectively advocating for is American democracy. I'm advocating for democracy. Now, I don't claim to know what exactly the result of that democracy is going to be but i think a third party is the minimal standard by which such a democracy can be possible uh, right now i don't think we're living in a in a democracy i think we're living in a uh, a political system that is captured by special interests and, and an establishment which doesn't represent the interests of the american people this was as simple as that
I I hope in the future if we ever do a debate, I really want to go like line by line. Um, I like I don't have anything I really say against you. You're, it's like the Vosh strat. Not even actually, Vosh is better. At this you, you're you're saying so much that is really just devoid of content. Okay. Like this idea of like I'm advocating for democracy. Yeah. Guess who else says that? Republicans and Democrats, right? This doesn't mean anything. Um, you, you know, when you talk about like, oh, I don't want a third okay. party just for a third party. Earlier, you literally admitted the whole thing. The whole the most unique thing you were advocating for in a third party was the existence of a third. Why? Party. You literally said it. Why? Did, what was my reason? attention to the conversation yeah what was my reasoning if you if you want to actually advocate for things and you want to actually win people over okay and you want to have this broad tent then you need to find issues because this is where these political moments start these political moments don't start with some like random person saying i'm gonna make a third party they usually start with some problem that neither like or or not even neither that no entity is addressing at that point in time this is where people on the ground these are these moments of action where people gain a great deal of political power is when these moments come up and they're is nobody offering a solution to any of these problems. For you to sit here and say, you're demanding that I fix everything and that I give the perfect utopia. I'm not saying that at all. I just want like a couple broad strokes that don't involve something from the fucking 19th century or don't involve you using the, the terms dialectical materialism and meat and potatoes issues in the same fucking paragraph explanation. It doesn't make any sense. Wait, if you want hold to on. For I'll, I'll party, explain the relation. Be able to yeah, have, yeah. You should be able to have some like broad issue, some broad narrative, something you're pushing that people want and you need to be able to defend it. If that's too much for you, then you're basically asking asking you to attack a utopian third party that doesn't exist, that might exist at some point in the future, that you're asking people to suffer real material harm for right now to try to bring it into existence. So, one, two. The first thing is you're saying, you think it's somehow a contradiction between talking about dialectical materialism and meat and potatoes issues, when the whole point of dialectical materialism is to be able to discover what meat and potatoes issues are. Now, that it takes a great amount of intelligence to discover simple things is like, it's, it's basically like... It's like uh, almost an axiom of computers. Like that's how fucking computers work. You use a lot to get a little. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of complexity to discover simple things. I don't know like why you're acting like it's such a huge contradiction. But regardless of that, to actually address what you said, um, you know, like I said, you're saying that uh, oh everyone talks about American democracy um, across the aisle. Well, all you're doing here is meta narrativizing the whole debate and like complaining about not being able to go point by point. Why don't you actually talk about the content of what they mean by American democracy? When I say we don't have current American democracy, I mean regardless of what the American people want, even if I ideologically disagree with it, it can't get passed because there is an institutional and establishment impediment, uh, the special interests and so on and so on. Now, if they mean, oh, we're just fighting for democracy, like, what do they mean by that? Because clearly I mean something radically uh, different. Now, you're saying, oh, what is it you're risking for Americans to suffer so much material harm for? Um, I think it's very clear that, again, you haven't addressed the argument about the issue of scale. Right now, uh, if the Republicans win, more people may be harmed, and uh, that's the argument you may make. But when you introduce the factor of time and scale, like uh, generations from now or even 10 years from now or 20 years from now, um, your argument collapses. What if by not doing something now, it, it should be wrapping up soon. Okay. Yeah. Um, 50 minutes. Yeah. What if uh, by not doing something now, you're risking uh, so much for the future? You know, you're meta narrativizing, saying, "Oh, this is just like Vosh, and Four this is just like ago, this." But you can, you can uh, John, stop cutting him off. You can really just focus on the actual content of the argument. You say, "Oh, you haven't said much." There you is just, no content to your argument. You're just you're uttering so much crazy random. Right? Stuff. Yeah. There's then I accept your. If you if listen, you can say there's no content to my argument. Uh, in which case, I'll say you just basically conceded to me because. Okay. So here's a question. You're just refusing well, to well, engage with anything I said. Let's round this out a little bit, okay? Do you want people today to risk suffering real material harm for a third party gamble in the future? Which people? The people who don't vote on behalf of averting their own no, material harm? No, the people harm? that do vote. Do you want them to divert their vote to a third party? Why, who are they? Uh, on whose behalf are they voting? I'm their own? asking you. What are they voting for? Answer my question. You're, 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 you're making I'm it seem like you. you're making it seem like I'm telling like a homeless guy. Oh no, don't vote for I the Democrats you, and yeah, make your life better. Okay? Those guys, those well, people who are suffering, don't I vote. Can't. I can't. The, the people you're talking about who are going to be harmed, Hello? don't vote. One, two, Destiny. All I'm at. Let's try this again. Okay, this might be our next 15 minutes. I don't know if you'll ever answer this. Huh? My question is: Is do you want people to suffer real material harm for a third party gamble? in the future. So telling somebody who would vote one party to divert to a third party and potentially suffer real material harm for a gamble of a third party in the future. 
Um, people are going to suffer, suffer regardless. That's what I'll say. Okay. So you're I, 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 I reject the framing of your question. People are going to suffer either way. I know that with absolute Do you think certainty. that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are making the same offers, the exact same material offers to the American public? In the long term, it doesn't matter. I'm not. Why do you keep you? Do you see how you're dodgy as fuck on all of my? Because I reject questions. the framing of your question. You're making it seem like right now is the only um, meaningful. Because side when you of, go to vote right now, that moment of voting is a moment that exists in history. Okay, it's and one and one year later, not what destiny, not a moment later, but like almost a year later, we still don't have an infrastructure bill. <laughs> so it's not in the moment. You don't well, vote just for right now. You haven't it's even in passed in the bill that's going to affect these people's lives. Okay, so here's the question. If how, the bill, okay, how are people's are lives going to be affected? If the bill passes, are you going to completely change your position on all of this? Holy shit, we got the new No, I'm not because it, 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 they can't even pass the trimmed down, shitty, subpar so-called infrastructure bill that we have now. God, God knows the one they're going to be able to pass. And by that time, it's not even an, uh, uh, it doesn't even effectively carry out what it in originally so intended to if the bill was like 1.5 trillion dollars you think that's worthless to the american public no, I, I, in the long term there's nothing impressive about the, have, do you see like the, yeah right, there's nothing yeah well okay you know. so destiny so you want to you want to use the same standards for both of us if i ask you a yes or no question you can only do yes or no and you can't reject no, not the framing. yes or no but just at least engage with the question not like it doesn't even matter the future is long like it doesn't matter i refuse to reject it. You can try asking hold on no hold on question, hold right? on the infrastructure bill there is absolutely nothing impressive about a government passing a 1.5 and it's not going to be 1.5 trillion a 1.5 trillion dollar infrastructure bill given the sorry just the absolutely sorry state of american infrastructure in regards to like the passing of time if you look at china's infrastructure even the infrastructure in certain european countries it, american infrastructure is absolutely laughable so this idea that like this watered down bill is going to be somehow impressive or a, a hallmark of why someone had to go out and vote for biden is just an extreme cope and also I don't see why Trump wouldn't have also maybe uh, conjured up some kind of infrastructure bill to pass. Maybe he would have had his own. Who knows? I mean, I don't even see what your argument is here. I, 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 just, I like how you ask. I, I, you both have been very good when it comes to moderating yourself, so i got to go use the bathroom. And since you've both been so well behaved, I think you can deal with that. Destiny, it's your turn. Yeah, you said you were going to ask me a yes or no question. And you just no, I didn't. You said... You said uh, you don't. You agreed with me that you don't have to answer yes or no questions. I literally because you can told reject. you, yeah, you can ask me a question, I'll answer it. And you oh, have really? The opportunity to ramble. No, no. I thought what you said is, oh, you don't have to ask me a yes or no question, but at least address the substance of my argument. Isn't that ad verbatim what you just said? Oh yeah, but you made it sound like you were about to ask me a question. So shut the, the fuck up, dude. Rambling. You literally, you, you I literally so, quoted so, you ad verbatim saying you didn't sure. want me okay, to so ask then, you a so uh, yes or no then, question. You so earlier you believe that um, who is this guy that just joined? I'm a mod. I'm gonna just make sure. Yeah. Oh. So Destiny, maybe okay. wipe a towel off your forehead. You Ooh. seem really sweaty and nervous. Just letting you know. <laughs> I'm good, my dude. Yeah. Thanks though. Um, so, I, I the thing is, I just I, I can't argue against like the the Nirvana third party where you've given me no positions, you've given me no reason to think it's gonna succeed. You're telling people to suffer real material harms right now or risk real material harms right now um, to vote for a hypothetical third party in the future. Um, or and then furthermore, you're going to make the argument that the Democrats and the Republicans are materially offering the same thing to the American public right now. If Trump would have passed a, an infrastructure bill like this, why wouldn't he have pushed for that more rather than the tax reform that just benefited the wealthiest Americans? He got one major bill through, and that was it. Um, that's like saying, why didn't Obama push for an infrastructure bill? Because as the passage of time changes, the policy prerogatives change. Obama's the worst example of you because he pushed for the ACA. That was his big legislation. He didn't push for an infrastructure bill. Because he, he could only do one thing. The, right? so uh, Trump, did he, Trump did talk about the sorry state of American inf It was like a political... Yeah, what did he do? What was his legislative priority? What did he pass? Maybe he would have after 2020. Cuts. Maybe he would have you after have 2020. One, you have one thing. All I'm saying is I, I don't know. Maybe he would have. Maybe he wouldn't have. But you I don't, don't know. You don't, you don't know for certain whether Trump would have or would have That's not. It's rich of you to use the argument you don't know for certain when you're advocating people to switch their vote from two confirmed parties to a hypothetical third party in the future for something that might be good. I'm actually, I'm actually not really just saying people should vote for the third party. I'm saying people should focus. People who have the time to care about politics actively, like your listeners and, and, and even you yourself, right? You sit on your ass 
ass all day and talk about fucking politics. You don't, don't represent sit on my ass all day. You, you don't, but okay. Regardless, you don't represent the majority of people. You, your life is mostly focused around talking about I politics. Literally, the issues that I advocate for are literally democratic issues. Who currently, yeah, are, like, but, 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 right but, now. You you my issues are not but because, most because most destiny, because you're not like someone who's focused on, you know, like the way you make a living is about politics. Okay. So if, if your life can be dedicated to politics, all I'm saying is, Focus your energies and your dedication on building a third party. No, why um, the fuck would I focus on a third party when I don't know any third parties that are talking about the issues that I think most Americans care about? You should certainly have Well, you should you should there party. there are enough like-minded people who agree that they can't get what they seek to get done through the current two parties and those people like should what? get you together. Give me an example of any of those issues. Of what issues? What are things that you? Oh, fuck, I, I have to scroll. Like okay, minutes. there's like, there's I there's a few. Really there's like, okay, there's a few. There's a few. There's a few. Okay, there's okay. um debt forgiveness. That's probably the biggest one that I think can unite people uh, across the aisle. It's the issue of big tech monopolies and and big tech uh, censorship, um which is you know the, I guess a cultural issue that people. You think in people are united on issues like debt forgiveness? And yeah, big I I think debt forgiveness can. I think debt forgiveness can unite this country definitely. Okay. Um, um yeah i think i think, I think, I think the question you do you mean all debt or do you mean like just student loans i, I think well there is a massive issue of j just american people being in debt right now and um a financial reform things of that nature of uh, housing reform that there is um there, we have a housing crisis in this country, right? And I don't see how the Democrats or the Republicans can address that crisis in meaningful ways. Again, because you the have... crisis is very complicated. Oh because... yeah, it's 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 very complicated because everything is just an objective reality. Except when I decide. Why do you keep saying objective reality? Be, because because because, because everything debate, everything can be explained by me deferring to other causes. Except when I sit on and tell people they have to go vote for Biden. If you want at to that moment, cause, I at, 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 at that moment, a particular cause. So for instance. We can talk about housing being a complex issue. Housing is complicated primarily because the people that live in a certain district are already going to be ultra privileged being in houses. So in order to uproot them, you necessarily have, have to act in an undemocratic fashion to do it, which is something that's very difficult to do in the United States. That's why when you take votes in areas about like, hey, like, should we expand like multifamily housing or should we open like a fuck ton of apartment buildings? Well, who are the people that are most likely to vote in that area? It's not going to be the transient millennials that come in and out of work jobs. It's going to be people that huh, own what, houses what, that live in that area, that have roots in that area. And when you're talking about voting for expanding housing, housing in those areas, guess who that hurts the most? It hurts the most entrenched voters that are the most likely to show up to the polls, that are the most likely to go to their city council meetings, that are the most likely to stay there for long periods of time. That's what makes that issue like complicated. Okay, okay? rap Just god, calm down. Just rap rap god, calm down. With, wait, no, no. Just because Four you've come to this conversation with zero understanding of any of the policies you're talking about, please don't project that on me. This conversation could have been entirely interesting in like 50 different ways. Just because you're utterly clueless on everything except for these weird fucking phrases that have to do with fucking dialect materialism or whatever philosophy you're going to talk about, doesn't mean that I came here clueless to argue. Oh, okay. Policy simmer down rap god rap no, rap god simmer down shit like you are rap, you calm down calm down i'm on the ground talking about real listen it's not eight, eight mile we're not on eight mile we're on twitch okay so <sighs> calm down a i have little to bit. talk fast because L you listen you have to chill you have to chill if you, want, you if you want if you want if you're interested in dialectical materialism uh dm me and i'll set up uh, i can educate you and you can be my student so i don't know why you keep bringing it up you seem interested in the ideas of dialectical materialism yeah one sec and uh it should be like five minutes and uh, regard and you said okay, I agree that ho the housing crisis obviously it's complex, but can the way we address like is the inability for us to address it because of that complexity is what I reject? Yes, it no, is. I that reject is that. Issue. I fundamentally oh, how would you reject it with that. A third party, then tell me how you would go about doing it. Then I'll wait. Yeah, a third party can have a general housing reform whose main linchpin, whose main policy prerogative is to make sure Americans can have affordable housing. And it can do that at the federal level to ensure that um, at these local levels and with all these differences between, for example, high housing prices and these issues of zoning can be addressed. Like, for example, I know you don't like me mentioning China, but when China engages in five-year plans, for example, I'm not saying we're going to have our own, but it's just a broad policy prerogative. It does take into account the various local realities and complexities Damn, that make it impossible it. to just pass one bill that's going to be a catch-all to solve like the whole okay. of the geographic and demographic issues surrounding housing reform. So I don't see like how your argument is relevant. The fact that we have a housing crisis in this country isn't only because um, uh, the reasons you mentioned or, or because like, oh yeah, 
Uh, it's only about millennials who want to move to big cities. It's it's a it's about people who don't have a clear future of being able to have their own homes and raise their own families. Dylan, you there? I think this is just like it's like the perfect third party like debate. Like it, you just you speak yeah. in these like useless empty platitudes. Like, well, the way that you do it is by passing a bill that takes into account all those complexities. Wow, just okay. So how how are the Democrats? <laughs> I just couldn't think of that. Yeah. Just do a big bill. That how listen listen how how are the why Democrats? Are so yeah yeah. And at the how okay level, okay how are the wait, Democrats? Wait, wait, so wait, so you're saying the housing wait, crisis wait, cannot wait, be solved? Wait, wait, I gave you on interrupt time to speak. That's just gonna have his uninterrupted time to speak, and then you're both gonna do outros because we were gonna wrap up uninterrupted. Speaking. Okay. So, Destiny. Um, I just want to say that I also support really huge, complex bills that just solve all the complex issues, and I think those bills are awesome. I just want to be, I just want to make my position known on that. Okay, that's all I got. Okay. Destiny is glitching out into the mix. Outros. Now I'll we're... just do my outro. Yep. We're good. Uh, okay. Outro. Yeah. As an outro. I'm to address the point i never said that you're going to be able to uh create a bill that's going to solve all problems all i'm doing is saying one of the reasons we have housing crisis in this country or at least one of the reasons that the current political establishment is inept in being able to solve that crisis is because it's captured by special interests like the real estate mughals and oligarchs and 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 financial institutions and things like blackrock and a third party isn't going to be handicapped by those special interests in being able to address the housing crisis so that's just one example of what i'm where i'm coming from when i'm talking about this a third party isn't a guarantee all it means is you have a fucking chance i have never preached any guarantee whatsoever all i've advocated for is a goddamn fighting chance for the american people that's all okay destiny and then we'll have the vote uh, the judges will vote destiny. um when you talk to people about third parties, usually they're pie in the sky dreams. People that don't have a good understanding of how the government works, of how policies work, of why some of these issues are so complicated. Uh, I can empathize. I used to be the same way. I was a big Ron Paul supporter, abolish the Fed and all that shit when I was a freshman in college. Uh, it's really cool to think that there are these really complicated issues that can just be solved with one sweeping, you know, federal legislative initiative. But unfortunately, as you grow older and you look at why things are the way they are, you realize these issues are really complicated. They involve, you know, multiple people fighting on multiple sides of issues in order to get like things done slowly over time that's how the american system is built and so long as we genuinely remain divided as americans on a lot of these issues the government will necessarily remain slow moving when it comes to solving these issues we don't all agree on how to solve these issues the same way in the united states that's why there's such a polarization of the parties that's why there's so much gridlock in congress and hopefully in the future this changes but i know for a fact that the thing that won't change it is fucking third parties okay D dylan i actually have to go so d d so i don't really care about the belt or whatever so we good? Uh, if you if you would like to leave, you can leave. Okay, for sure. Yeah. See you later. Bye bye. Okay. So. Uh